Hello! Lately I've been doing a lot of opening study on 9x9 together with Kataco and sometimes I like to let it play out the game all the way to the end just to see what, what might happen even though you're unlikely to see the exact same variations in your own game you can get an idea of what kind of tactics are possible from a type of position So this time I was looking at this opening which on the GoQuest app is known as the hand fan opening uh, I'm not quite sure how we're supposed to twist our heads to make it look like a hand fan. You can use your own imagination. But there are two common ways to get, get into this. Either from the orthodox, like this, or from this one, which is called the soccer juggling on GoQuest. So if you like playing this as white, you can get into it in these two different ways. And in this position, one of the top moves from Katago is this very slow-looking solid extension. The purpose of this move is to limit white's forcing moves against the black stones. If you compare it with something like this move, then we see there's still some weakness here with the single F3 stone. So when white extends here, you know, either black has to spend a slow move to fix that, or white is going to get the F, F2 point. Uh, this is also playable for black, but just showing sort of some drawbacks of playing a more aggressive move like this. And similar if black tries this Hana, you know, there's a cut here, and there are some weaknesses for white to work with to settle these stones here. So the solid extension really gives white as little as possible. And white has many options. Let's look at white jump here, black jump here, white jump here. Now we can see that black can continue to put pressure on these two stones and it's not easy to save them right away. Uh, one variation we can look at is if white just tries to maximize the eye space. Black can simply capture one stone and the corner shape is now a L group. It's just a two by three in the corner and this is dead. White cannot make two eyes locally in the corner, either like this or like this. So, uh, white's only hope here is to try to make an eye around the D3 point, something like this. But now black can just falsify this eye and there actually is no, no cut here. Black is alive, white is dead. So this is not working. Now there are other ways for white maybe to try to save these stones, but what we're going to look at in this game is what if white sacrifices these stones? Is this really possible to sacrifice such a big group? Uh, can white still come out ahead? Well, white jumps here, which is a big move on its own, but this is also threatening now to save these. If black just takes the next big move here, uh, white could simply go for the same sequence and the c7 stone is going to change things. So now, when white plays here, black can no longer falsify the eye, because now white could just push and cut and capture three stones. So, this would be no good for black. Instead, black should do something about the, the eye here. And there are multiple options, but let's say black plays this really simple one, just saying, okay, these are dead now, I'm going to get all these points. White can force here once, and then get this big endgame, and this big endgame. So we noticed white gave up a group, but got sent to play lots of big endgame points. And b6 here is particularly important because this is going to allow white to get more sent in the future at b5. But for now, black plays h6, which is also a nice endgame. There's a weakness here that black can use. Uh, white can connect back to two stones, they're not going to die, but black is going to get to squeeze underneath like this. So black is going to scoop away a lot of points here. At some point during the sequence, white should take a timeout to play b5. Uh, white can do it right now because this is bigger than capturing three stones. Reviving these white stones would be better for white. Uh, so black has to respond. If black responds like this, white now gets the a4 hane. And what's annoying here for black, black can't even play uh, Atari like this because now white will cut an Atari and if black connects, then white is just alive inside. Um, there's no way to kill this white group. So black would have to fight some co here. It's a bit messy. Kotago thinks white is slightly better in this position. So instead black should just extend like this. And then you might wonder, couldn't it have been better for black to respond to b5 here immediately? This would make a4 less annoying. The problem now is that white gets this cut and then we hane. And now, if black connects solidly, black will still need a move later at e4 after the outside liberties are filled. And of course, if we just try to 
take the stones off the board as quickly as possible, then white will later get the a3 Atari. So this black will lose, uh, black will not gain any extra points like this. White will quickly gain the points back. And in any case, in this position, it's not like white can immediately play a3, because at this point, uh, the right is now bigger. Black does not need to respond to connect that b2. The threat this far was only sent because it's threatening to save uh, the c3 stone by connecting b3, and that's too big. Uh, so at this point, white can continue in the lower left, but has to come back, connect the three stones, and black continues the endgame here. Here it's best to connect solidly to minimize the RG. What's nice here is that this makes mi of uh, a and b. Both of these would be nice for black to get, so white doesn't want to allow black to get both of them. Um, if black plays one of them, white is going to take the other. And if white had tried a different uh, move here, for instance this one, then it's a bit more messy, black can play here, and there's a bad weakness here which black can use. So that's no good. Uh, so the advantage of the solid connection is that now if black plays here, white can solidly connect and there's nothing black can do inside. In the game, black plays this one, so white takes this one, and now is the, for me, maybe the highlight of the game. This is a simple tesuji, but easy to miss. Uh, can you find, with the hint that there's a tesuji here, what needs to be the next black move to win this endgame, or to draw this endgame, I should say. There's only one move which leads to a draw. It's not enough to simply Atari here. White will connect, black captures, white Ataris, black connects, and then white descends here, and there's no way for black to save the j8 stone. Black has to come back here, connect the tail, and it's a call, but black doesn't have any call threats. And this is actually a win for white by uh, two points. So what, what does black have to do instead? Black has to cut first at b7. And this is actually something you might have seen strong players talk about sometimes, that there's this kind of cut in... in um, you, you, you could see this in a 19-19 game as well. It's a tactic to increase call threats. Um, but this is a simple example where we can see the difference it makes. We can sort of see the call happen immediately afterwards. Often in a 19-19 game, you know, you cut and then maybe 10, 20 moves later the call happens and it's not as clear, like, did that one call threat make the difference or not? So now we can see here what this move does. So we cut once, then Atari, white captures, black captures. Now, if white plays Atari here like before, this is a losing mistake by white. Now, when we get into this call, black has this beautiful call threat at A8, black here, and actually white does not have any call threat. D2 looks like it could be a call threat, but it's not. Black can just connect the call, and white can save this group. And then you can have something like this. It's really another code, but there's no code threads left, so um, there's really nothing to do here. White is just dead. So in this variation, black actually wins by two points. So white did a mistake here. White should, instead of playing this A6 Atari, white should immediately descend to start this code here. And now the only thing black has as a code threat is this connection. And white shouldn't respond, then we get back to the same as before. White should just connect the co and black plays the Atari. And under area scoring rules, um, we can see that what happened on the right here, white winning the co was worth um, four points. It's a swing of two intersections changing ownership. And black getting to follow up the co threat was only one intersection changing ownership. We don't care about B7 becoming a stone instead of territory. So it's better for white to connect the co. The co is bigger. Than, than this one in area scoring rules. And this is a draw under uh, area scoring rules 7 commies, so uh, this is correct play by both sides. So, we saw here the only way for black to keep the draw in this position is to play this cut, and then white should not allow black to get the a8 co threat, but should just immediately start this co, and then black uses the a4 co threat. White connects the co, black is this one, and this is correct play for both sides. Hope you like this game. Thank you for watching.